The divergence test, or nth term divergence test, states that for the infinite series, the sum from n equals to one to infinity of a sub n, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n doesn't equal zero, then the series diverges. It's important to note that if the limit equals zero, we do not know if the series converges or diverges. It's also important to note we can never use the divergence test to show convergence. We're asked to consider the series, the sum from n equals to one to infinity of 11 thirteenths raised to the power of n. We're asked to apply the divergence test to determine whether the test tells us the series converges, diverges, or might converge or might diverge. Remember though, the divergence test will never show convergence. To apply the nth term divergence test, we need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is 11 thirteenths raised to the power of n. And now to determine the limit, notice how as n approaches infinity, we multiply by more and more factors of 11 thirteenths, and 11 thirteenths is less than one. So if we keep multiplying by values that are less than one, the values get smaller and smaller and approach zero, which is why this limit is equal to zero. So because the limit is equal to zero, we do not know whether the series converges or diverges, and we select might converge or might diverge. Going back to the limit, if you're not clear on why this is equal to zero, we can look at a table of values as well as graph the terms of the series. So let's also do this. Going to the graphing calculator, let's press y equals, clear out any old functions, and let's enter in 11 thirteenths in parentheses, raise the power of, let's use the variable x instead of n. Now let's press second window for the table setup. Let's start the table at one, have the change in the table be one, and have the independent variable on automatic, and now we can press second graph. As we scroll down the table, notice how as x increases, which is really n, the y values approach zero. This verifies our limit is equal to zero. Another option would be to graph several of the terms in the series, Let's also do this. Here's the graph of the first 10 terms of the series. Notice how the terms do approach zero as n approaches infinity. One more thing I do want to mention about this series. If you're already familiar with infinite geometric series, you may recognize that this is an infinite geometric series, which is an infinite series in this form here. And because the absolute value of r is less than one, which in our case is 11 thirteenths, the series does converge, but we do not know this by the divergence test. We would know this from the infinite geometric series test. So from the divergence test, we can only conclude that the series might converge or might diverge. Let's look at a second example. Same question, different infinite series. To apply the nth term divergence test, we need to determine the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is now 8 sevenths raised to the power of n. We'll notice here the base of 8 sevenths is greater than one, and therefore as n increases, we multiply by more and more factors of 8 sevenths, which is greater than one. If we keep multiplying by values that are greater than one, the values get larger and larger and approach infinity, and therefore this limit approaches infinity, which does not exist. But because the limit does not equal zero, we can conclude that the infinite series diverges. Again, going back to the limit, let's look at a table of values as well as a graph of the terms to verify the limit. Going back to the calculator, let's press y equals, clear out this function and enter 8 sevenths, raise the power of x. And let's go back to the table by pressing second graph and notice how as x increases, which is really n, we can see the values get larger and larger and approach infinity. Let's also graph the first several terms of the infinite series. Here's the graph of the terms. Notice how as n increases, the value of the terms get larger and larger and do approach infinity. And finally, going back to the series one last time, 
This is an infinite geometric series which fits this form where the absolute value of r is eight sevenths, which is greater than or equal to one, which would confirm that the series does diverge. If you haven't learned about the infinite geometric series test, you will soon. I hope you found this helpful.